Welcome, Jürgen, for uh, this call today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, so maybe you can start by, you know, introducing yourself and telling us who you are. Thanks, David. Uh, so my name is Jürgen Kienel. I'm the founder and uh, chief commercial officer of Zaga. Together with Mark and Sonia, we uh, started uh, this journey in 2016 already. And uh, um, based actually on the questions uh, that, that I know you're going to ask, um, we, we have actually engaged with the regulators in 2016 already and uh, started that journey walking with the regulators to try and get a regulated crypto uh, uh, crypto on-ramp for South Africa. All right, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so, so even before we even get to the, to the questions, maybe you can let our viewers uh, know where are you based? We are based in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, our, currently our service is live only in South Africa. Um, we have partners in into Africa and uh, to the rest of the world, but generally our services into Africa. We are actually about to launch uh, to, to open up the service worldwide and then uh, start adding uh, currencies for different currencies. Uh, uh, countries. Yeah, so I think we, we will get into that. I know you've had uh, partnerships with a few African uh, uh, startups, uh, but just even before we get into that, um, I think we are well aware that you are among the few uh, companies that got into the regulatory sandbox, which was quite exciting. Uh, maybe you can break down for us, you know, uh, why you decided to get onto the regulatory sandbox and how the experience has been so far. When we started this business, we we engaged with the regulators from from the get go. Um, our our modus operandi has always been to become a regulated entity. Uh, we believe that um, the real money flow through regulated entities. Um, and I actually like the way Mark sometimes explains it and says, uh, you know, we can get five or ten percent of the market today, but with a regulated entity, you can go after a hundred percent of the market. And uh, so the big institutions where the real money flow is, and that is where. Um, all those those businesses are regulated and they have compliance teams they won't be able to transact with the crypto economy properly until there is proper regulation in place our modus operandi is to make sure that uh, we are well if we can be on the forefront but that we are ready when the regulation hits we want to be regulated how how, how long have you been in the regulatory sandbox well so, so we have a, a several uh, interactions with the South African Reserve Bank over the years, um, you know, meetings, uh, sessions and all that, um, but then finally got invited to, to enter into the sandbox, um, which was fantastic for us. It was a great feather in our cap because it just felt like, you know, here is our opportunity to really test what we would like uh, and to test. And the, the reality is there's a lot of information out there and you know you can go into the news media you can go onto the websites you can go into the adler manuals you can do whatever you want but it's slightly different when you can ask the regulator directly is this how you are viewing this particular issue and um you know you you, you get your, your your answers you get your facts you get their point of view um you know of course uh, they can't commit to anything at this stage because regulation is not set it has to be signed off by the minister of finance but the way we see it is um, we are trying to interpret it as, as well as we can and, and build a system that is as, as regulatory compliant as we feel it could possibly be and the way we see the regulation play out. Of course, uh, you know, the, there has been a lot of talk around regulation. South Africa is probably coming up to be one of the, uh, you know, countries in Africa that will probably, you know, have a regulatory framework. Uh, do you mind maybe speaking to us about the state of uh, regulation right now in South Africa and possibly where you see it going uh, with the upcoming regulation? So the state of regulation is there is no regulation <laughs> on crypto. Uh, what's happened was the South African Reserve Bank has issued a position paper on how they view crypto assets and how they could potentially regulate. And I think this is, um, I'm not, I'm not a regulator, so I don't know how regulation really works and how the process uh, usually pans out. But this particular process was they put in, put out a, a white paper where they state kind of their views. Then they put out the regulatory sandbox where certain uh, participants can test some 
things. So, you know, you can imagine that they're asking us questions. Uh, imagine they're asking us difficult questions. We're asking them difficult questions and hopefully we get some, some good answers from that. And then um, after that, they will put out what is their regulatory proposal, which I think is, is early next year. Um, this is not confirmed, but this is what I think they would like to do. Um, and then this has to go out for public comment. So uh, at that point, uh, there would possibly be some pushback from certain industry players, or I don't know who, who would push back, but uh, you know, I don't know how that process will play out. And then once that period is over, uh, that has to be presented to the Minister of Finance uh, for final sign off, as, as far as I understand. Um, and I might have skipped a few steps, but generally, um, I think within the next year, there could be a regulation in place for South Africa. Right, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, we, we actually can't wait to see how that regulation looks like. Um, but, but again, Jürgen, um, from your experience now, you know, having been sandbox and obviously having interacted with the regulators uh, for quite some time, how would you describe your relationship with the regulators? I think our, our relationship is, is, is professional. Um, you know, uh, they, they are extremely helpful. Um, you know, we have a session every second week where we uh, get the opportunity to ask them questions, uh, to present some, some, some of our findings. And we do play quite an open book. Um, our BI tools, everything just gets opened and share screen and let's go, you know, let's, let's get stuck in and, uh, you know, <laughs> let's see if there's anything that uh, uh, you, you like or don't like. And, um, you know, uh, more often than not, they don't like something and then we change it. And, and we, are, we are getting to the point where, um, where we feel we have a good handle of, 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 of what they would like to see. But yeah, that, you know, and, and this is the disclaimer from the regulator. Uh, they, they cannot commit to anything until it is signed off by the Minister of Finance. And, and, the, and their views might change, um, you know, within the next months. But from, from where we stand currently, um, we feel that uh, it's going to resemble very closely to the current Adler um, uh, model. We, um, so Adler is a authorized dealer with limited uh, exposure. And those, those businesses like Forex businesses have, have limited uh, sort of uh, limits how, how they can transact on customers behalf and deal with a foreign asset. And uh, crypto, in, in my opinion, would be viewed as a foreign asset and therefore it would form part of the Adler, Adler manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like there's quite uh, uh, some detail there. Uh, so, so just taking you back from, uh, to, you know, your experience uh, with the sandbox, what would you say are some of the key lessons that, that you probably learned that you, uh, you, you are not aware maybe before or maybe after uh, they'll probably inform your product now and in future? You, you know, just some lessons from the sandboxing experience. I can, what I can tell you is the regulators are very well informed. They know what's going on. They understand crypto. People, people sometimes have a misconception that maybe the regulators might not understand this part or that part or this or that. They know what a cold wallet is. They know what uh, uh, how a distributed ledger works. They know uh, what the advantage of a crypto asset is or why a Ripple is cheaper than Bitcoin. Um, they are very clued up. They're working with us every day. Uh, they're working with various crypto companies and they are also engaging with industry players all the time. Um, yeah, they are engaging with businesses uh, from right across the globe and uh, certainly on top of things. That's all I can tell you. Now, again, you know, as much as we talk about regulation and, and obviously uh, having a position paper out, we know that you know, it's 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 not all roses. You know, uh, some South African banks are still, um, you know, they they they've. Uh, it's not been easy for some crypto um, services, you know, to work with them. Uh, what would you say is the issue, or what's the current situation right now? Um, are there banks that are willing to work, you know, with with you with other crypto services? And, and how does that look like? Maybe, maybe take a step back and, and, and think, think about it this way. The South African Reserve Bank is, is, is the 
see it as the ultimate governor is the um, is the is the issuer of the South African rand and the fiat currency. And the dealers that are authorized to deal with that fiat currency is the banks or are the banks. Um, those, those banks are, are called authorized dealers. So to get that authorized dealer li license, they have got a lot of regulation and compliance and uh, you know issues that have to deal with. So currently crypto is not defined inside the authorized dealer manuals. And because crypto is not defined inside that, they actually are not authorized to deal with crypto. And I think that this, this is the misconception. It's not that a bank doesn't like crypto or a bank doesn't want crypto. Um, the, 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 the reality is that they, it doesn't form part of their mandate. Um, and so, so their banking licenses are at risk. And that, that is why um, when they close crypto companies, uh, bank accounts is because they feel those crypto companies are high risk businesses. And uh, you know potentially um, maybe some fraudulent activities might have happened through there, or whatever the case may be. And uh, therefore, they just said, you know what, it's it's not worth our risk appetite in order to uh, uh, deal with these crypto companies. You know, um, we we were also at one of the banks that closed all the crypto companies' accounts. Um, it it affected us as well. Um, but but that's not across the board. Not all the banks feel you know uh, the the risk appetite is that high. Um, it, it really depends on how they view how you as a crypto company are dealing with your customers. Remember, you are the step down. You are the one who's KYCing your customer. You are the one that's doing the anti-money laundering. And you, you need to make sure that your systems are in place that the bank feels comfortable to bank you. Again, now, uh, you know, as Zago, you've uh, been expanding rapidly. You know, you've, you've uh, announced a number of partnerships with Bitmama, Niger Crypto, Paxfu, uh, which were very welcoming. Uh, some of these partnerships have been around for a couple of months. Maybe do you mind telling us how those have been, uh, how that relationship has been so far? And also, can we expect future partnerships as well with other crypto services across the continent? Definitely. Our partnerships um, have definitely gone worked out for us. And um, you know, from a just from a um, from a marketing perspective, already that has been a, a very great uh, asset to our business. Uh, but we have lots of partnerships coming up. I, you know, we've got five integrations going on at the moment, and um, those will be announced in due course. Now, of course, now we are aware of uh, your the recent launch of your, you know, uh, crypto allowances product. You call it the XDA. Uh, you said it's the first of its kind in South Africa. Maybe mind, first of all, breaking it down to us. What's what's this uh, product, and uh, you know what it does, and 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 uh, you know the solutions that you're providing with the product. I wish I could call it a product um, because it's it's actually uh, it's more a limit than a product. <laughs> so so um, basically, the way the Adler license works today is in order to deal with a foreign asset you have got what's called a single discretionary allowance and a single discretionary allowance is how much money you are able to send out of the country to deal with uh, you know to, to externalize funds now because you cannot and this is a, 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 according to section 10c of of the uh, exchange control act you're not allowed to externalize anything via uh, crypto we have still taken the view and said although you're not allowed to externalize but if you do buy crypto, it has to form part of a similar type of allowance structure um, because otherwise it opens up the system for for people, how can I say, to, to potentially buy more crypto than what their allowance is technically going to allow them in the future. So we believe that as your single discussion allowance is going to form part of your crypto asset in the future. And therefore we have built our system to, to get those systems in place already. So it is battle tested by the time the regulation comes in. Uh, you mentioned that this product has been informed by the upcoming regulation or the favorable regulation. Maybe you can mind also touching on that. It's, it's not informed by anything. So what it is, is um, we are modeling it on the single discretionary uh, or the foreign allowance system that is currently out there. We are taking a view that uh, the Adler manual will, will potentially be the overriding um, 
uh, manual for crypto assets and crypto will be defined inside the Adler manual. And therefore we are just complying with the Adler manual regulations. And this is our interpretation of what it would look like. So, so, so for someone maybe who's, um, who wants to use that, you know, uh, I mean, for, 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 uh, to access XDA, how do they do that? So currently, um, we, we allow bank transfers into Zago two ways via Mercantile Bank and through Bitfest Bank. And then we, we issue, uh, the, the, your XZR stable coin onto, onto the ledger. And at that point is what it influences your allowance that you can use. Um, we then also track how much funds you are sending to other customers. Uh, let's say, for example, if I had to, uh, here's an example. I have 10,000 Rand. I put it into, into uh, my Zaga wallet. So my allowance would be influenced by 10,000 Rand. So uh, see it as my million Rand allowance is now 990,000. 990, um, then if I uh, turn that, uh, that those Rands into XRP, my allowance won't get influenced at that point because that is a non-reportable transaction. Um, you're, you know, it's called double reporting. You can't report on the same thing twice. Uh, you are already in crypto because uh, the moment you place money into Zago, it is already crypto. Um, and then if you send that funds maybe to a Luno customer outside of our system, then what, what would happen is, uh, you know, we have got a non-reportable uh, tracking system as well. So we then uh, track the amount of funds that are coming in and out of your wallet um, as a non-reportable transaction. You said this, this is the first of its kind in South Africa? Well, it's yeah, definitely the first of the crypto kind, <laughs> but uh, the, definitely all the banks, uh, all the foreign uh, exchange control companies have to do this. Uh, this, is, this is part of the Adler manuals. So we are effectively building a system that is, is controlling that type of allowance system. But I think what, what is important is we've built, uh, what, is, what makes it really innovative is we've built it, it's automatically doing this. Uh, the banks um, and foreign companies, they track these things manually. So you are actually able to go over your allowances um, via, you know, if you go through a bank, it, it is actually possible. Um, uh, but but not on Zago. Uh, on Zago, you you would you you would be stopped uh, in your tracks. All right, awesome. Yeah, so, so yeah, thank you for that breakdown of the product. I think uh, uh, we did a piece uh, a few days ago and it was quite well received. So yeah, thanks for that breakdown. Okay. Um, yeah, Jürgen, uh, and as we close uh, this discussion, maybe you know. Uh, Zago has been around for quite some time, you know, with all these partnerships and, you know, uh, launches or, you know, service offerings like XDA. Uh, what would you, what advice would you give, uh, especially around crypto services that, you know, regulation still seems a bit far off or catching up? Uh, what advice would you give to other, you know, uh, crypto entrepreneurs or people uh, within the space we are building crypto products. And my advice would be to move very fast uh, because what's going to happen is the regulation is on its way and every day we find it more and more difficult to open new bank accounts, to create new partnerships, to do to add new services because um, these the whole industry as a network is getting uh, more sophisticated eventually the barrier of entry is going to be unattainable. And I believe that uh, in, a, in a year or two, I think it's going to be as difficult to open a crypto company like it would be to open a bank in South Africa. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jürgen, for speaking to us today.